Let me introduce you to Kevin Wynn. Kevin is an electrical engineer for the Federal Aviation Administration, or the FAA. In other words, he's an aerospace engineer. He works for a company called Lockheed Martin. Now let's get down to business. Kevin spends his time both in the office and on full-scale aircrafts. In the office, he designs new hardware to bring the performance and technology in the aircrafts up. On his spare time, he is required to fill out site surveys for his company. The other half of his time is spent working on actual aircrafts. This is where the scientific method comes into play. Kevin uses the scientific method at work every time he works on an aircraft. He has to complete a lot of detail work before he can get into the actual manual labor of fixing an aircraft. The first thing that happens in the scientific method is observation. Kevin observes the malfunctioning aircraft that comes into the facility to trace where the issue is coming from or where it started. Then a hypothesis is made for where or which aircraft part is the main problem. So then new parts for the aircraft can be ordered. After the new parts have been received, Kevin withdraws the old parts and installs the new ones. This is the designing of the experiment. After Kevin installs the new parts, he collects data by recording what parts were changed in that specific aircraft and also records what specific issue caused the aircraft to malfunction. A final analysis on the data is taken to make sure everything is correct to be typed up for a final report. The report is then presented to the company executives to make sure everything has been finished correctly so they can send it back to the aircraft owner. But all this was not just handed to Kevin. He worked hard through high school, taking tough classes consisting of AP Physics, AP Calculus, and AP Mechanics, all classes he recommended me to take. Kevin was intrigued by aircrafts as a little boy, but wasn't so closely interested in the electrical hardware of the plane until the end of high school. After a few engineering classes in high school, Kevin decided to major as an electrical engineer for aviation. Kevin had many different colleges and universities in mind, like UCLA and Oregon State. But after all the madness, he decided to go to Washington State University. That's where I have a different opinion. Instead of going to Washington State University, I went to attend the University of Washington. Kevin attended Washington State University for eight years, and after a lot of partying and late night study, he got his master's in electrical engineering for aviation. But over those eight years, Kevin had also matured greatly, and right after college, he applied for an internship at Lockheed Martin. For two long years, Kevin interned at Lockheed Martin, but he was slowly losing interest in the job only because for two years he was stuck doing the dirty work for the company, like copying papers and other things along those lines. Just when he was about to call it quits, he received a promotion. Kevin was officially granted into the FAA as an electrical engineer. He started as a basic electrical engineer in aircraft, doing very low level work on airplanes and a lot of report writing for other engineers. Two years flew by and over that period, Kevin received four promotions. Now he tells others what to do. Doing just that, Kevin now earns an average salary of 85,000 annually. That's a lot of money for a single man like Kevin. His hard work paid off and he gets all that from the job of his childhood dream. From doing my project on Kevin, I've learned a lot about being an electrical engineer and how the scientific method is used in this career. This career could be a possible choice for me in the future for many reasons. One reason is because of my high interest in aircrafts and how aircrafts function. 
this might sound a bit silly, but the reason why I'm so fascinated by aircrafts is because at a young age, my dad would take me every summer to go see the Blue Angels fly around over Lake Washington. For some reason, I was just connected to them. Another reason why this career could be one of my possible choices in the future because I enjoy working with computers and hardware and electrical networking. Since both of these things are incorporated into aircrafts too, I would hit two birds with one stone, working with computer hardware and aircrafts all in one career. To tie everything together, this career also pays very well with an education. For me, a reasonable annual salary with a college degree would be above $50,000. This is also another reason why this career could be a possible choice for me in the future. But from all the great things I learned about this career, there are also a few negative factors I learned about it too. One factor that makes me not want to select this career for my future is the great deal of stress that also comes along with it. The stress is caused by the risk of installing something incorrectly in an aircraft. Also, the number of days for a project can be shortened drastically without a notice. A second negative factor that makes me not want to select this career for my future is because you have to do a lot of public speaking in front of hundreds of people. This is bad for me because I just have a really bad case of stage fright. Some other career choices that I have in mind besides this one include being a civil air engineer or a pilot. Overall, I'm highly qualified for this career, and based on the classes I enjoy being in, I think pursuing to be an aerospace engineer would be the ride of a lifetime.